We are gathered here today. I truly can't believe it, you guys, but I am officially officiating my twin sister's wedding in December. So back in August on our birthday, she gave me a birthday card. And for the past few years, we've kind of done no gifts for each other. Like we just decided that we're not getting each other birthday gifts anymore. So I, it slipped my mind and I didn't even get her a card this year, but she hands me this card. And so of course I'm like, I'm the worst sister. I'm so sorry, I don't have a card for you. I'll have to get you a card. And she's like, don't worry, just open the card. I open the card and it's like kind of serious. You've been so meaningful to me in my life and how much of a role model my marriage is for hers. And I was like, this is a really nice birthday card. And then it said, you know, flip to the back. I have a question that Zach and I wanna ask you. And the question was, will you officiate our wedding? We had sort of discussed it because they are not having a religious wedding. And so they were actually having a little bit of trouble finding the right type of person to officiate. They were considering using a rabbi to officiate the wedding, but because they're getting married on a Friday night, there were very few rabbis that would do it. So they were having trouble and they sort of jokingly floated the idea by me of me officiating this wedding. And I was like, 100%, I would love to do that for you. But then I didn't really think it was real at that time. So then I opened this card and I see it and the waterworks. It was a very emotional moment for me. I know what a special privilege this is and what an honor this is to be asked to do this. So I'm just touched. I am touched. Allie and Zach, I'm touched. Anyway, I had to go through a lot of things to get ordained. So if anyone out there is looking to get ordained, if you are gonna officiate a wedding and you're not currently a member of the clergy, there's a pretty easy way to do it. You do need to look up the rules and regulations for, I'm just talking about the United States, by the way, but you need to look up the rules and regulations for the state that you live in or the state where the wedding is going to be taking place. But basically I needed to go on the Universal Life Church website and I needed to become ordained by just becoming a member of the clergy as a minister of the Universal Life Church. Now this is like non-denominational, you don't have to be any religion, literally anyone can get ordained and my documents have come in the mail. I got this, this is actually a copy of it that I made and I'm gonna block it out because it has my address on it. But this was my certificate of marriage efficient registration. So I got this certificate of registration and then I officially was sent this, which is my credentials of ministry to certify that Lucinda Morris on this day, the 13th of August in the year 2023 is officially recognized as a member of the Universal Life Church and has all rights and privileges to perform all duties of the ministry. So here you go, I'm ordained. This is actually a copy. As you can see, it's flimsy. The original document had to be sent to the city clerk's office in the state of New York. I don't know, I had to fill out some forms, send my actual marriage license, my credentials of ministry away. I'm, it's unclear if I'm getting them back, but I've done it. And one thing I've heard you have to make sure to do in the state is to like make sure that you're filling out these documents correctly and that on the day of the wedding, you officially sign the right documents and you get them back to the office in your state within the window that they need to receive it back by. Otherwise the marriage can be considered null. <laughs> I think I'm like making things up here. I don't know exactly what I'm talking about, but I was sent this book. It's called By the Power Vested in You. How to Officiate a Wedding, a guide for ordained ministers. I read this book cover to cover in 35 minutes. I have to say, as someone who has been to many weddings before, I knew almost everything in here aside from some of the laws and information about making it legal and, and things that are important to do. And as you can see, I've retained a lot of that information because I'm sharing it with you incorrectly. But this book was helpful at giving me a pre-ceremony checklist of things that I as the efficient need to keep in mind before going into this wedding ceremony to make it the best it can possibly be for Allie and her fiance. And it also gave me a nice list of questions to ask the couple basically before my wedding to my Michael, we got married by a rabbi and the rabbi essentially did some premarital counseling with us where he sent us questions and we spoke through topics about our family's future goals and values and money and our relationship and we felt like it was such a helpful 
way for not only him to get to know us so that he could give us the best ceremony, but also it was a good way for us to talk through things that were important to discuss before marriage. So I'm trying to take on that role for Allie. You know, I sent them a whole questionnaire, religion aside. So anyway, it's just very exciting and I'm honored. I'm truly honored. If anyone out there has officiated a wedding and has their script handy, you know, it might be helpful. I feel like if I like look at other people's scripts, I can kind of pull elements that I found touching and moving and build my own for them that pulls inspo from places. So if you've got a really good script for officiating a wedding, please send it to uh, lucyfink at gmail.com. <laughs> that would be really lovely. If it's after December 1st, 2023, don't bother sending that. But if it's before, shoot it over to me and I will just be eternally grateful to you. This is something I'm really excited for. I'll try to keep you guys posted with how it goes and you know, to Allie and Zach's comfort, I will share as much as I can about the process and what I did and what I said. But for now, we're just getting very excited and I'm actually going with my sister tomorrow to New York City to Kleinfeld where she is having her wedding dress fitting. And in typical bridal fashion, she is not wanting to, to share her dress with anyone before her wedding day. So I'm not gonna be able to show you her dress, but I'm gonna take you along for the fitting because Kleinfeld has given me exclusive access to their, what's it called? They have this room, I'm gonna find out tomorrow, but they have this room in Kleinfeld that is like their, they did the hemming and they did the beading and it's just like a crazy operation. So I'm gonna take you guys with me tomorrow and they're giving me access to this special room. So we'll check it out. Anyway, that is what's happening. Just so excited for Allie. I'm so excited to do this and let's officiate a wedding together. All right, we're at Kleinfeld. Allie is about to do her wedding dress fitting in her beautiful dress. I'm so excited. I can't wait to see her again. Hear your dress? Yeah. <laughs> so we've now been to Kleinfeld so many times because I got my dress here years ago. Our sister-in-law, Hannah, who's also here, got her dress here years ago. And we already came for Allie to try on dresses. She already picked her dress and now we're just back to get it. Fitted and it's my first fitting. Yeah, it's her first fitting. Kleinfeld is letting us go behind the scenes because they have this incredible warehouse of beading and sewing where they're doing all the alterations on people's dresses. It's such an operation. There are so many people working here and they're so knowledgeable about everything wedding dress related. It's incredible. And if you've ever watched Say Yes to the Dress, which is filmed right here in Kleinfeld, you know how busy this place gets. And we're here on a Saturday. So this is prime time. I'm also gonna go upstairs to the main floor after we go into the alterations room and I'm just gonna see how bustling and buzzing it is today. I'm sure it's exploding. I'm so two, excited to be here. Just over two months to go. Oh my gosh. That's it. All right, well, let's go to alterations. Bye. whole wall 
behind me. I don't know if you can see all the holes in the wall where all the wires are coming out. But this whole wall behind me, we're waiting for our mill worker to have a free schedule again because he's gonna come back to our house and he's building up these floor to ceiling closets that are going to panel the whole wall. It's going to be three sets of double doors. So the left and right will be double doors that open up and we'll have adjustable shelving in there. That's where I plan to keep all of my work gear, cameras, lights, lenses, all that good stuff. And then the middle double doors are gonna open and retract back in on themselves like this. Open and retract. Wait, that was a weird way to do it. They're gonna open and retract. And there's going to be a desk in there that's hidden away behind the closet doors. And basically I still am gonna have a floating desk. I actually ordered a new desk. This is my old desk from my old apartment and it's all scratched up and I'm gonna donate it. So I ordered a new desk, it's here. It has not yet been assembled, but I will show you that as soon as I open it. And my plan is to have this like beautiful floating desk be sitting in the middle of the room empty, clutter-free, I'm not gonna keep much on it. I really want people to come over and be like, wow, your desk is so minimal. But really, when I spin around, hopefully my chair won't hit the desk, but when I spin around and I open the closet doors, that is where all my work stuff will be hidden away, like a desktop computer and all my papers and pens and anything I need for my work will be in there. I'm drinking, you just saw me make this amazing hot cocoa drink that I am obsessed with. I don't know if I can call it hot cocoa because it's technically hot cacao. I feel like when people use the word cacao, it sounds very pretentious, but that's what this is. This is 100% cacao. And I ordered these little like 100% cacao discs that come straight from South America and they're 100% cacao no sugar they're really amazing if you like bitter dark chocolate which i do and i just put them in hot water with our instant hot thing and i use the little ooh hair i use the little whiskey thing and i make this incredible afternoon drink that is so healthy for you it has so many good things in it and it's also not caffeine free, but there's something about this dark chocolate. This 100% cacao has this other thing in it that like neutralizes the effects of the caffeine. At least that's my understanding of it. So I don't get jittery like I would with a cup of coffee. And I've had this right before bed and it thankfully does not keep me up the way coffee definitely does. Just wanted to share like a little bit of my desk setup right now as is in this office. Things are kind of coming together. I will move back and show you like a whole view of this room so far because I just hung some artwork. One thing about this desk chair, I love it. It's so comfortable, but a few times I've been on calls with people and they've asked me if I'm at the dentist. <laughs> I get it. It's like a high back chair. And especially with like the holes in the walls and the wires, I think it looks like I'm literally at the dentist about to get my tooth filled. But I wanted to take you here because I have been sitting here now for a few hours. I'm actually editing this video that you're watching right now, like other parts of it. My next plan, because my parents just took Milo out to a hibachi restaurant, I'm so jealous. My next plan is to work on this efficient speech. And so I sent Ali and Zach these questions, like a questionnaire that our rabbi sent us. I found some of the questions in the book that I referenced earlier in the video, but I also kind of just found some online and I sent them off. So I'm waiting for their reply to my questions. And once I get that, I'm really gonna get started. But for now, what I'm doing is I'm sort of writing out some of my initial thoughts, like I'm just brain dumping. I feel like this is a good start because I have a lot of thoughts swirling around my head that I haven't put to paper in any way. So I'm just gonna open up this Word document and we are brain dumping. If you'd like to brain dump with me, you may. That is so fucking good. Let me show you the room first, hold on. Here's the space so far. This is a curved sofa from Castlery. I am in love with it. It's so beautiful. This artwork hanging over the fireplace is my mom's custom work. I have this little coffee table from West Elm. This is a couch from a company called Acorn. It's like actually a little Milo couch. We're not leaving it here full time, but this is right here while we figure out what type of accent chair we wanna get. I just threw Milo's toys in a little basket to the side of the fire. And then this is where I was sitting. 
So this is the wall I was talking about. It will be totally paneled with closets. And then I'm not sure if I mentioned it in a previous video because I don't think I had decided on it yet, but this cutout right here, we're actually putting a built-in accordion door. And it's one of those like indoor to outdoor bifold accordion doors that like collapses to one side and then closes all the way. And you can use one of the panels as just like a regular swinging door but then you can also fold the whole thing against the wall and open up the space. So I'm just gonna freeze the screen here and pop in a picture of what it's gonna look like, hopefully, once it's all done.